Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I brought a, I brought a stopwatch. <laughs> Couple things I know. Um, just so you're not bored of just listening to me, I, I, I'll provide you with some cute small people to look at while I'm talking. Um, thank you very much, Alana. That's very kind of you. Um, Alana is one of my favorite people. She really is. She's one of the first people that I met uh, after my son was born, and um, she is a mentor and uh, a great example of uh, a true advocate. And uh, I really, I, I, I look up to her and have learned so much from her in uh, the past seven years. Um, I have three children. Uh, Beckett is seven, Zoe is six, and uh, Poppy is four. Uh, Beckett happens to have Down syndrome. Uh, all three of my children are perfect in my eyes, as your children are perfect in your eyes. I, I thought of a bunch of different things that I could talk to you about today, and when Natasha and I were talking um, earlier, she said, you can talk about anything. You can talk about being a news anchor. Oh, how boring. <laughs> You could talk about working at CTV, you could talk about, you could just do your TED talk, you could do, and you know, I mean, it's funny because I never want to talk about my job because it's not what defines me. And it is what defines a lot of people, but my job definitely does not define me. What defines me, I feel, is my family and, uh, and the people that I'm helping to raise with my husband. That, that is my, my true definition in life, that is my purpose in life, is to raise three um, amazing people, three people that that um, I think will contribute to the world. So um, when trying to figure out what I wanted to talk to you about, I thought I would share something with you that I haven't really shared with anybody except for my husband. Uh, and that is that um, we, we have never told our daughters, Poppy and Zoe, that Beckett has Down syndrome. They don't know he has Down syndrome. And I thought about it the other day because I thought, I have to tell them that he has Down syndrome because they're going to hear it from somebody else. They're going to hear it on the playground or hear it from somebody else. But it's never crossed my mind to have that conversation with them because we don't think about Down syndrome in our house. It doesn't, it's not a topic of conversation. We don't look at Beckett and think of Down syndrome. Um, and so we've just never pointed it out to the girls. And they think that he is perfect, as we do too. He's just their brother. And sure, he you know, still wears a pull-up, and he uh, doesn't talk as much as they do, and he's uh, a little delayed in a few things, but he's just their brother. And they look out for him, and they can usually understand everything he's saying better than I can. Um, and they are, uh, they're just a perfect little team of three. And so I've had a conversation with a few of my friends about having this discussion and telling them that he has Down syndrome. And most of my friends were quite surprised and shocked that I haven't told them. And they thought that, you know, they couldn't figure out why I haven't had that conversation. And it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm embarrassed or that I didn't want to have the conversation with them. It's just that we, we honestly just... It doesn't come up in our house, ever. It doesn't come up with our family. It doesn't come up with our friends. It doesn't come up at school, in his classroom, because he's just Beckett. Um, when Beckett was born, we didn't know he had Down syndrome. So he was five days old when we, ha uh, we had a blood test. And after five days, uh, we got the results, and it was confirmed. And, um, you know, I, I, was, I cried probably for a day. And then I realized, I don't want to cry anymore. This is ridiculous. I have a beautiful son, and there's nothing here to be sad about. And so I uh, put on my big girl pants, and, and uh, I decided that I was, you know, we're the team captains here, and everybody will fall in line behind us, and uh, we, will, we will march forward, and, and we will lead by example. Um, and I decided from that very first day that we found out that Down syndrome would not define Beckett. It isn't what defines him. It's like when I found out I had cancer. It's not what defines me. That's not who I am. And Down syndrome is not who Beckett is. And so our journey began, you know, seven years ago, and we just kind of um, march along. And we don't, uh, we, don't, um, we don't think about it ever. I mean, come on. That is a cute kid right there. I mean, all three of them are cute, but he's, that's my favorite picture. It is my favorite picture. So 
What I found in the last seven years, even at work, there's just little things that happened that I feel I'm not in control of a lot, but I can control what happens around me. I can control what comes out of my mouth. I can control what people around me say because I don't have to be around them if I don't like what they say. And, um, you know, even at work, simple things. We have, we have, um, we have a, a handbook that we have to use. And it's still to this day people will say, uh, a special needs boy was, went missing. A Down syndrome boy went missing. An autistic boy went missing. Uh, defining the person by their disability, not defining the person first. And even to this day, even though it's, it's written in stone in the CTV News Handbook, I sometimes have to go in and remind somebody, oh, you know, that, that boy has Down syndrome, but we don't describe him that way. And it's just little things that uh, we just continue to do. Because I think the world, I, I think I, really the main, the main reason that I've never really mentioned it to the girls is because I just want the whole world to see Beckett the way that his sisters see him. And I don't understand why we place so much judgment and limitations on people that we don't think are typical or perfect. And um, that's when I first met Beckett. <laughs> um, and so we set these limitations on people, and we do it all the time. And one thing I learned is that none of us are perfect. It, I mean, it doesn't exist. Uh, we all have something, every single one of us. And it may look perfect on the outside, but it's not always perfect. There is always something. And none of us get out of this life unscathed. There's always something. And so when you have somebody who has a definition of a diagnosis or a disorder or something, like let's just say Down syndrome, there are so many expectations that people place on that person, uh, and limited expectations. And uh, when Beckett was born, we were told all kinds of things. He won't drive, he won't go to school probably, like he won't get a proper education. He, uh, he'll be overweight. Um, he will um, never get married. You know, all these things. And I don't believe any of it. Um, because I think Beckett will do what Beckett wants to do. And it's my job, and something that I've learned from Alana and others like her, are that, you know, it's my job to make sure that Beckett reaches his potential, whatever that might be. And so I feel like I need to spread that word about everybody that has a disability uh, or special needs. Because it's interesting, you mentioned the Order of BC, which I still can't believe. And I keep thinking they're going to phone me and say, ah, uh, yeah, we made a mistake. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be getting that, that award if it wasn't for Beckett. I, I really truly believe that because he taught me something that I don't think I could have learned from anybody else. And, you know, I've always, I've always, you know, volunteered and all that sort of stuff. But when Beckett was born, I, something switched inside of me. And I realized Beckett's lucky that he was born into our family. Like we, he is a lucky, lucky child because he is, you know, not the norm in the world. Globally, I mean, the way that we treat people with disabilities in this country is really good compared to elsewhere in the world. And when we do stories on babies in China or babies in India, it is mind-boggling to me. And so when, I, when, I, when Beckett was born and I was holding this beautiful baby in my arms, I just thought, I will do everything I can to help spread the word about how wonderful he is and how perfect he is and try to break those expectations or break those limitations as much as I can. And, you know, I, I have a voice in the job that I do and I try to use it uh, for good, not evil. And, um, and uh, I, you know, we all have our passion and, and at work we all have our little pet projects and mine just happened to be helping people that have special needs or health care issues. Um, having cancer will do that to you too. Which, by the way, I don't have cancer anymore, so I just want to... I keep saying cancer, but it's like... <laughs> I'm done with that chapter of my life. It is over, hopefully. Um, but yeah, getting back to setting you know, limitations on people. And, and what I find that, that the real issue is with others who are not... Um, 
who are not in the presence of somebody that has special needs or a challenge uh, is that they have these limitations because they have a lack of knowledge. They don't understand. They, are, they have a fear. I had a fear when Beckett was born. I didn't know anything about Down syndrome. I didn't know anybody with Down syndrome. So my biggest fear was that I didn't know what to be scared of, so I was scared. I had no idea what the future held for him. I mean, now I do. I, feel, I'm, I am an expert on Down syndrome, I, I feel, because it was my job to become an expert. But most people I meet, like I even meet people now, you know, Beckett's cute little seven-year-old, and they're, they're, they're cautious of him. They're not sure, like, is he going to understand me? It's like, yeah, he understands everything you're saying. And it's just a lack of knowledge and really a lack of curiosity. There's a lack of curiosity. And um, I, you know, I'll share a story with you that I met, it was probably about 15 years ago, I met a woman on a plane. And um, actually, it was more than 15 years ago because I was in my 20s. <laughs> I keep forgetting how old I am now. Uh, it was a long time ago. And I was coming back from Toronto and we were on a plane and it was totally packed. There was one empty seat and it was beside me. I was thrilled. And there was a, we were just getting ready to take off and there was a woman and she was blind. And she, her seat that she was in was broken. And she, they were like, oh, well, we have one spare seat. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to stretch out for my seat. And this woman came, and she sat beside me. And I was terrified. She was blind. I didn't know if she was, knew I was beside her. I didn't know what to say to her. I didn't know if I should talk to her. I was probably 21. And she sat down. And I sat there for a couple of minutes, and then I finally said, oh boy, do you think this plane's ever going to leave? And that was that. We had a conversation for five hours on the way back to Vancouver. And we became friends, um, and she is an incredible woman. And she said something to me that really resonated. She said, you know, people, we, are, we teach children from a very young age to be scared of somebody with a disability. A child will say to their mom, Mommy, why is that person in a wheelchair? And the mother will say, Shh, don't say, don't, don't say that out loud. That's rude. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't draw attention to it. She goes, it's not. They're curious. Ask the person why they're in a wheelchair. Tell the child why you think they might be in a wheelchair. She goes, I hear people all the time say, Mommy, why does that person have a cane? And the mother shushes them or the father shushes them. She goes, and then that instills in them a fear or a, it's rude to ask, and it's not rude to ask. I want people to ask about Beckett. I want people to know who he is. I want them to be curious about him. I want them to understand that Down syndrome is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Beckett is curious. He is smart. He is loving, he is funny, he is everything that his sisters are, everything that they are. I think that Beckett will, uh, when I read that there was a young man with Down syndrome in Ireland that got his driver's license, I was like, yes, that is good. <laughs> Beckett would probably be a better driver than most on the streets of Vancouver. <laughs> At the age of seven, he probably would be. You know, and so I, that's why I want to, and, and when, when Lilo shared that, that, that story with me, all those years ago on that plane, it stuck with me. And even when Beckett was born, I remembered that story because it's true. And now when I see somebody, and, and this was even before Beckett was born, uh, in a wheelchair or somebody that was struggling to get across the street or whatever it might be, I talk to them. I say hi to them. I don't just brush them off. I don't think that they don't have anything to contribute because they do have something to contribute. When you see a boy with Down syndrome working at Starbucks, how many people say hi to him? How many people have a conversation with him? I talk to the baristas behind the counter all the time. But people assume that because this young man has Down syndrome, he can have a conversation back, or you might not understand what he says. You'll understand what he says. You'll figure it out. And you won't know until you try. And so I always try to, I guess, you know, spread that message that just because you're in a wheelchair or just because you have a walker or just because you have an extra chromosome 
It doesn't mean that you don't have something to contribute. You do. They, everybody does. We all have something to contribute on some level. <clears throat> um, going to school is a whole new ball game. So Beckett's in grade two. And, uh, you know, I, it, it really is. It's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole new thing. And learning how to navigate the school system and make sure that Beckett has his support worker and that he's safe and that he's included. And I always have to remind the school that, you know, number one is safety, number two is inclusion. And I, he cannot be excluded from anything. So... And one of the biggest things was is they had Beckett eating his lunch in the physio room. Yeah. And I think this happens to a lot of parents. Um, and and I, I, well, why is Beckett eating in the, in the physio room? Well, because, you know, he, it, it, the distractions are really hard and it's just easier. No, it's easier for you if he eats in the physio room. But you're excluding Beckett. So what you're doing is you're taking him out of the classroom, putting him in a physio room with all the other kids with special needs, and then you feed them all. And then you let them go out and play, but they don't really get out on time to play with the other kids. And so the other kids, it's more about the other kids seeing him being taken out of the classroom, put into another special classroom to eat, and then he can go back out. I had a huge problem with that. And I said, you know, Beckett needs to eat in the, in the gym with all the other kids. Oh, well, you know, it's kind of, it'll be fine. He'll get used. How, is he gonna, how are we going to know how he's going to be if we don't try? If you just don't put him into the gym with all the other kids because he's very social and he loves the girls, <laughs> loves the ladies. And so we started and guess what? He eats in the gym every single day and he loves it and his lunch gets eaten. And I always say to them, you know, if he doesn't eat all of his lunch, it's okay. He's not going to starve. He's going to be okay. It'll be fine. He'll eat, you know, yogurt when he gets home and it'll all be good. It's more important to me that he's included and not always taken out of the classroom. And I think that it's, as a parent, it is, um, you know, something that I always have to remind teachers and support workers about. And they're, at our school, they're amazing. They really are incredible. But I still have to remind. And I'm sure there's other parents in the room that know that, you know, at the end of the school year, at least for me, uh, it's the anxiety of... Are they not going to give me a one-on-one -on -one support worker next year? And the, the um, and how does everybody feel about an IEP? Like, I, I hate IEPs. Like, I really, there must be a better way. There really must be a better way. And so, you know, at the, we just had our IEP. And I feel like I have to go in and downplay my son and downplay his achievements so that I get what I need for him next year. Because if I go in, I mean, it's, it's really, it doesn't make sense. And I was advised by somebody a long time ago when, uh, when we would have people come to, the, to our house when Beckett was a baby. And we were getting ready, you know, to put him into preschool. And they said, Tamara, I know this is going to sound terrible. Um, this is going to sound terrible, but when they ask you if Beckett can dress himself, you need to say no. Even though you want to say, well, he can put on his shoes and do the Velcro up. Don't say that. Because if you say that, they're going to check off that he can dress himself. And if they ask if he can feed himself, I know he can spoon into his, his yogurt, into his, but you've got to say no, he can't feed himself. I know you want to say that he can, because if you say that he can, you know, oh yeah, he can eat yogurt, then they're going to check off. And then every time they check it off, it's something that you don't get. And Beckett needs, he needs support, because there's many things that he doesn't understand. And so, yeah, he can, you know, even if he can put on his clothes and they're on backwards, don't say that, just say he can't put on his clothes. And I always thought that was just so odd because as a parent, you want to say, oh my gosh, he's doing so well, he can say these words and he can put on his clothes and he can do this. And then I want you to know too that none of this is in my script. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> I have no idea how I got here, but it just came to me. But anyways, I just thought it was something that you could probably relate to and something that I don't think makes sense as parents of children 
uh, with uh, special needs and, and challenges, I want, to, I want to celebrate my son, and I want to celebrate his achievements, even no matter how small they are. Yet I'm always being told, and so when we were at this IEP last week, I found myself going, okay, remember. And I said to my husband, remember, it's, you know. And so, um, you know, he will have support again next year. But, they, you know, they said to me, the principal said to me, last year, because they were thinking of taking Beckett's support away and sharing it with another boy, his best friend, who also happens to have Down syndrome. And uh, I just thought, oh my gosh, that is, that is a, like, Beckett takes off. And when he takes off, he um, is very stealth-like. Like, he waits until you're not looking, and then he's, he very quietly backs out of the room and then quietly closes the door, and then he's gone. Whereas his best friend, Finn, goes out full guns a-blazing. Like, they're totally opposite, but they're both, they're both, um, they both take off. And so I was, I was, I had terrible fear that this was going to happen. And the principal said to me, Tamara, this is all about getting Beckett to be independent. And I said, no, it's not. He's in grade one. This is, had nothing to do with him being independent. This has everything to do with him being included not independent. He has plenty of time to be independent. Plenty of time. But at six years old, he doesn't need to be independent. He needs to be safe, and he needs to be included, and he needs to have support. And so he got his support. So I think they're a little scared of me at the school, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I do. And, and I think other parents know that, and so I always have other, like, I get a lot of messages on Facebook, private messages on Facebook from parents that, you know, need a little help, and I'm like, no problem, you need help, you just let me know, and I'll do what I can. I will definitely do what I can to help you. I'm just checking my time here. Okay, I went over, um, <laughs> which I knew I would, but, you know, I just, I, when I was asked to come here, I was really honored, and I just, I, I'm not an expert on anything, I'm a parent. And Beckett is my teacher, and uh, he has taught me. He has taught me a lot. Uh, and like I said, I wouldn't. I don't think that I would be doing any of the stuff that I'm doing if it wasn't for Beckett and and what he has shown me. Which is why I haven't told my girls because I believe that he has shown them so much. And I hate labels, and I don't want to label him. And when I do have the conversation with them about Beckett, which will be soon. It will be a very casual, lighthearted, easy, simple message so that they understand. And it's not going to be some serious sit-down conversation. It'll just be very, very casual. But, you know, more than anything, I just, I really, you know, Tim, when I was hearing you speak, you really said a lot of things that resonated with me. And, and um, you know, I salute all the parents that came before me and all the advocates that came before me because they really paved the way and made it so much easier for me and other parents like me that are new on this journey. And, uh, you know, the self-advocates that are out there, they are just such incredible people, and they have made such a difference for my son, and they will continue to make a difference for my son and the children that come after him. And, you know, I feel like it's, it's my job to continue that, that fight and to be an advocate, not only for my own family and myself, but for others that maybe don't have as big a voice as me. And I'm happy to be their voice. And I'm happy to continue along that path and to break stereotypes and to uh, hopefully encourage people to know that, you know, there are no limitations when it comes to any of us whether we have a disability or not. We can do anything that we want. So thank you very much for having me here today.